The purpose of this video is to learn how to calculate wind components using the navigation computer. In the Australian ATPL exam you will need to calculate wind components either headwind or tailwind when planning the climb or the descent legs of a flight plan. In order to standardize procedures when planning a flight we will use the same process of calculating headwind and tailwind components when we do the cruise legs in which case we will simply add the wind component onto the true airspeed in order to calculate a ground speed. These calculations are done on the navigation computer. For our example that we will work through we're going to use a wind of 240 degrees magnetic at 120 knots, a true airspeed of 450 knots with a track of 295 degrees magnetic. The first thing to do is to set up the navigation computer whether that's the Jeppesen CR3 or the APR CR6 doesn't matter because the process is exactly the same. The first step in setting up the computer is to set the true airspeed and that is done up the top here. So we need to set a speed of 450 knots. So we're going to rotate the outer wheel until 450 is directly above the true airspeed marker. The next thing we need to do is to draw the wind. I like to draw a little X where the center of the X marks the exact wind position. So to make this easier you may find it simpler to rotate the inner wheel in so that the direction of the wind of 240 is directly above that TC mark. We then need to come up the scale here to identify the 120 knots. If you have a look the large size font here is not going to be enough so we're going to have to use the little numbers the smaller font size so 120 is at this mark here so we're going to mark a little X here directly on that vertical line so that the center of the X is at 120 knots. The next thing we need to do is to set the track above this TC mark. A track is 295 so we're now going to spin the inner wheel around until 295 is directly above this TC mark. Now that the wheel is set correctly we need to read the crosswind component and we can see the X is here. The crosswind component is calculated by dropping vertically from the X down onto this horizontal axis. When we come down here it's just under the 100 knots so I read that as being 98 knots. It is vital to remember that we use exactly the same font size scale as we did before. So because we use the small font size there, we're going to read the small font size here. You could easily make an error by reading that as 49 knots instead of the 98 knots if you didn't pay attention to this point. We now need to convert this crosswind component to work out what sort of drift angle we would be applying in this situation. To do that, we're going to read on the outer scale where our crosswind component is of 98 knots and on the inside we're going to read the drift angle. And so here at 98 knots you can see it's in between 12 and 13 degrees. It's slightly closer to the 13 so we will therefore say that our drift angle is 13 degrees. What this means is that the aircraft is no longer pointing directly in the direction of our track of 295. It's turned 13 degrees away from that direction. What that means is that the effective forward speed of the aircraft is no longer a full 450 knots. And this loss of speed is called the effective TAS loss. So to calculate the amount that we lose, we need to apply it if the drift is 5 degrees or more. We do this up the top and this shaded section here in the black gives us the drift angles that we need to apply. We're going to magnify that so we can see it in a bit more detail. So what we have is 13 degrees of drift which is going to be here and when we read that we see that our effective TAS is no longer 450 but it's less and the TAS loss is the difference between the 450 and where we have this mark. This is always a negative wind component and in this case we'll read that as being a 12 knot effective TAS loss. The next thing we need to do is to read off the head or tailwind component the same way that we did for the crosswind component except this time we come horizontally here until we meet this axis. Again 
Pay attention to which font size you're using. A headwind you can see is a minus value. A tailwind is going to be a positive value. And so in this case we have a minus 68 knot wind component. Our total component is the sum of the effective TAS loss, which is minus 12, and the wind component, which is minus 68. And so when we add those together, we get a total of minus 80 knots as being our wind component. Just to summarize, our first step is to set up the CR3 computer, setting the TAS, plotting the wind, and setting the track. Once these three are set, our next step is to read off a crosswind component, which we did by dropping down. That then allowed us to calculate a drift angle, which then allowed us to calculate the effective TAS loss, which must be applied if our drift is 5 degrees or more. We then read the head or tailwind component, and that gives us a total wind component when we combine that with the effective TAS loss. Hope this helps.